lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing the detailed analysis of Money Galore by Amu Jaletu. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Money Galore is a novel written by a seasoned Ghanaian writer called Amu Jaletu. The novel delves deeper into the issue of corruption and how politics is used as an instrument for playing tricks on electorates. Throughout the novel, it is clear from all indications that corruption has eaten deep into the moral fiber of the Ghanaian society as the novelist literally makes readers to see, hear, taste, feel, and even taste corruption in all aspects of life of the characters. In the quest for mass wealth and fortune, most people venture into politics, and in the long run, they gamble with the dreams and aspirations of the electorate. Amu Jaletu uses his novel, Money Galore, to criticize politicians who mount political platforms and make vague and overambitious promises without any conscious effort to honor them or fulfill them. The central character of the novel, Abraham Kafu, leaves his teaching profession, which he considers not lucrative enough, to seek greener pastures in politics. In his campaign as a candidate, Kafu is described as one who wants to get his constituency, which is across central, out of poverty, unemployment, congestion, and the hoarding of smuggled goods. In addition to that, he will cleanse across central, or the public sector, of bribery and corruption. However, readers are shocked to read the offset of all these laudable campaign messages as the politician in question considers their promises as mere propaganda, lies, deceit, and vague promises jeered at winning elections and not for the purpose of implementing them. Money Galore opens by introducing us to a headmaster called Mr. Benji Biasi. Mr. Benji Biasi is in his office in the morning working on the school budget as a result of a letter he received from the Department of Welfare and Pedagogy announcing a cut in grant to schools as the government is no longer able to bear the cost of feeding students. As he faces this imminent budgetary crisis, he reads the letter several times, wondering how his senior at school, Mr. M. K. Tewia, will sign off as your obedient servant while he orders headmasters on the issue of grant cut to schools. Mr. Benji Biasi is more worried as he thinks of how he is going to pay his workers, which includes the laborers and the kitchen staff, and most importantly, how he will feed the students up to the end of the term. The headmaster wonders why the government, which is not capable of shouldering the responsibility of feeding the students, does not want to ask parents to pay their fees. He despises the people at the top for having stagnant, retrogressive, and unproductive minds. His thoughts were disturbed with the arrival of the school bread contractor called Mr. Ansobeko. The school bread contractor sells an idea by which the headmaster will profit from. However, the headmaster is reluctant until he hears that he will be able to build a house of his own before retirement if he buys into the idea. Mr. Ansobeko, a fashionable 49 year old man, comes to the school to demand payments for bread supply to the school in January and February. The school bread contractor then tells the headmaster, Mr. Benji Biasi, of the church's plan to remove him from his office for obvious reasons, which includes he not being a native of Cape Coast. He always insisting that his students read works of African writers, and most importantly, him showing disrespect to the church Mr. Ansubeko also cautions the headmaster to be careful of Mr. Abraham Kafu since Abraham Kafu wants to take his place as the headmaster of the school. Mr. Ansubeko informs Mr. Benji Biase that he will pay his share of the bread deal to Benji Biase's wife. The headmaster thanks Mr. Ansubeko for his help but cautions him not to subject the student to undue hardship. Before the two finish their transaction, Mr. Abraham Kafu enters the headmaster's office. 
He is a member of the staff and a senior history teacher. He greets the headmaster with scorn and demands for promotion to the grade of assistant headmaster, something the headmaster thinks he is not due for. Mr. Abraham Kafu tries to compel the headmaster to convince the department for his promotion. However, the headmaster declines it, and this angers Abraham Kafu, who leaves the office, banging the door amidst threat to Mr. Benji Biasi. Chapter 2 A few weeks after the announcement of cuts in school grants, Mr. Benji Biasi goes to Accra and gets assurance that if he gets the people into some farming and service at the dining hall and still has deficit, the department will step in. He returns to Cape Coast and feels relaxed after the day's work in his office. Though his teachers do not cooperate with the department and its directives, he is happy the announcement of the farm project has been welcomed positively by the people and the teachers. Kafu, of course, disagrees with the directive and fails to participate. He spends his time at the staff room, reading or talking. He finds companion in Reverend Dan Opia Sisi, the school chaplain and retiree who is on a one year's contract. Reverend Dan Opia Sisi, who is worried about the fact that Mr. Benji Biase has not helped him to obtain a longer period of contract, hence, he condemns Mr. Benji Biase as an unkind man. Kafu adds to this by citing his own promotion case. Reverend Dan Opia Sese tells Kafu more about his background and the looming danger that lies ahead of him in the event of his appointment being terminated at the end of the one year extension. Reverend Dan Sese's worry is deepened by the fact that his wife is pregnant. Dan and Kafu pray that, with a pregnancy case, Benji Biase will have more sympathy on Dan Sese and allow him to stay. Kafu sympathizes with Dan Sese. Both Opia and Kafu express their disgust about the farming project to be done by the peoples. They complain about the department and its policies. Kafu announces that he will change all this through politics. They discuss politics and the issues associated with it. Kafu promises his friend, Reverend Sese, that when he gets into politics, he will change a lot of things in the civil service. Reverend Dan Sese wishes him well. They talk about Bianchi Biase as being somewhat kind but too rigid with rules. Kafu talks about how he despises teaching and announces that he will get out of it. He mentions money as his main problem. For this reason, he announces that he will confront the headmaster who has been stopping his promotion, which is likely to bring some more money. Meanwhile, Mr. Benji Biase is still at his office when Osei Kwame, a top class people, enters. Mr. Benji Biase does not like Osei because of his gossiping attitude. Osei reports to the headmaster that Mr. Kafu does not teach well. He drinks to class, comes to class late, and brings politicians as well as ladies to his bungalow. Mr. Benji Biase scolds Osei Kwame and drives him away from his office for the wild allegations he makes. As he turns over the complaints about Kafu in his mind, Kafu himself enters his office. He demands whether the headmaster has written a petition to which Mr. Benji answers in the negative. Kafu takes advantage of this and raises insults to the headmaster before he leaves the office, laughing loudly along the corridor. Chapter 3 National Secondary School reopens to finish the third term after a short break. Kafu who is still at post at the school, gets nominated by the National Executive of Liberation Party to contest the Accra Central Parliamentary seat. This nomination is highlighted by the Liberator, the party's newspaper, which says a lot of good things about Abraham Kafu and the good things he stands for. The chapter introduces yet another key character to readers, Ni Otulati, a cross citizen and a prominent contractor. The author tells of New Otulati's background, schooling, and his work at the public work department after dropping out of National Secondary School following his father's death and his eventual progress towards great wealth as a result of the various deals he engaged in as a foreman. Ni Otulati, a classmate of Abraham Kafu, 
is happy with Kafu's political rise and arranges to meet him at Hotel Ungwa for them to do some talking. Ni Otulati does this to place himself well in the mind of Kafu to benefit from Kafu in case he wins the election. The two friends, Ni Otulati and Abraham Kafu, exchange pleasantries and share some memorable old school day stories after which they settle to discuss politics and its funding while enjoying beer. Kafu laments on his financial predicament to his friend, Ni Otulati, and seeks his help. Ni Otulati, a typical across central man, agrees to help Kafu as he knows all about the constituency. Kafu asks two things from Ni Otulati, money and contract. Both men think of a working budget of 30,000 cities, out of which Kafu has only a paltry sum of 2,000 Ghana cities. He however pleads with his friend to help him, assuring him of good returns if he wins. Ni Lati promises to raise 15,000 Ghana cedars from two merchant friends of his, Madame Odofu Lamti and Auntie Salamotu, both in Accra. Madame Odofu Lamti deals in textiles, while Salamotu deals in several items. Kafu and Ni Otu Lati plan to meet to do more discussion, for which Kafu is invited to Accra on Friday afternoon, just before Kafu leaves Hotel Ugwa. Ansubeku, who is also a member of the Contractors Association, enters the hotel and exchanges greetings with Kafu against Kafu's will, as he has some ill feeling about Ansubeku. After Kafu's departure, Ansubeku condemns him, but Ni Otulati maintains his resolve to help Kafu. Before Ni Otulati leaves Kepkos, he visits Kafu, who has earlier on taken leave of Ni Otulati and Asobeko at Hotel Ugwa. He informs Mrs. Grace Kafu of his intention to help Kafu. He eats lunch and leaves. The next Friday, Kafu leaves for Accra to meet Ni Otulati. He stops at Winneba Junction to refresh himself. Here, he meets Esti Mansima, a student of Advanced Teacher Training College Winneba, and offers a lift to Accra. Kafu and Esti engage in a conversation. Unfortunately, Kafu's car is involved in an accident in which Esti passes away. Chapter 4 Kafu's Accident and the Death of Esti Mansima are sad events. However, the Liberator, the Liberation Party's newspaper, points accusing fingers to the National Union Party, the LP's main political rival. The Liberator's party does a write-up in the Liberator to accuse the National Union Party. This, the National Union Party, counters in the evening news, a paper that sympathizes with the National Union Party. The Liberator's party, church, and other social groups organize a wonderful and befitting funeral for AC Mansima with the Liberators Party bearing all expenses. All this happens while Kafu is at the hospital. The events help to popularize Kafu sympathetically. The sad incident also raised in donation from market women for Kafu, out of which new Otulati hires an apartment for Kafu at Laboni. Ni Otulati goes to the hospital with Mr. Abraham Kafu's wife and informs him a party executive council under the chairmanship of Mr. Mills Blankson has been composed to work for him during his absence. Mr. Odoy Hammond is the constituency secretary of the Liberators Party. Ni Otulati leaves Kafu and his wife, Grace, at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital where the two discusses development, congestion, among others at the hospital. They also talk about their own accommodation in Accra, among others. Kafu laments the poor condition of the teaching service, which has impoverished his father and is currently dealing with him as well. Meanwhile, Ni Otulati visits Makola and discusses alone with Odofu Lamte and Salamotu to support Kafu. Chapter 5 The fifth chapter opens with Mr. Benji Biase 
a Reverend Opia paying a visit to Kafu at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Mr. Benji Biase informs Kafu about the school farming project and says it is progressing under Reverend Opia's supervision. Ni Otulati arrives at the hospital and Kafu introduces him to Benji Biase and Reverend Opia. Soon, Benji Biase and Opia leave Kafu to go back to Cape Coast. Kafu discusses his private building with Ni Otulati, who schemes out a plan to achieve that. That day, Kafu is discharged. He is taken home by Ni Otulati. After some time, Ni Otulati takes Kafu to Makwala, where the market's woman offer Kafu a big and assuring welcome. Ni Otulati and Odofu plan a small rally and Kafu is invited to thank the people and offer them his promises. After the short speech, Odafu takes Kafu and Ni Otulati to the back of a shop and serves him. Kafu thanks Odofu for his support. Kafu's rival in the parliamentary election is discussed at arm's length by Odofu. Meanwhile, both parties, the Liberators Party and the National Union's Party, hold their final rally to canvass for votes. While the Liberators Party meets at the Bukum Square, the National Union Party meets its members at the Post Office Square. Both rallies were well attended by the Liberators Party, gathers about 8,000 people, against the National Union's Party's 5,000 people. Both Ajin Yabua and Abraham Kafu sell out their vision to the electorate. Kafu shuttles between Accra and Cape Coast to keep his teaching job and work on his political ambition. Elections come and Kafu wins to the great astonishment of Ajin Yabua. Indeed, Ajin Yabua passes away following the electoral shock. Chapter 6 News of Kafu's success in the parliamentary election comes with great joy, grace. Kafu's wife gives birth out of enthusiasm the next morning. Meanwhile, Kafu, Ni Otu, Odofu, and Salamatu celebrate their victory their own way. While Ni Otu Lati celebrates with Odofu, Kafu sorted it out with Salamatu in the respective houses of the women. Ni Otu Lati gets drunk and drives his car into a cab for which he pays 100 CDs to settle the issue. He manages to drive to Salamatu's house and falls asleep. Meanwhile, Kafu gets appointed to the Ministry of Internal Welfare. Salamatu, Ni Otu and Kafu discuss how Salamatu reaped the benefit of her investment into Kafu's election. They agree that Kafu should work out the licenses for Salamatu to import pig feed. All set, Kafu pays a visit to his ministry to see things for himself, where he was received by Mr. Newton Vuga, the permanent secretary, who looks sickly, though hard working. Newton has no trust for his colleagues. In the same way, he despises politicians, but has to work for them in order to keep him and his family going. Kafu exchanges greetings with Nuto and teases Nuto when he Nuto says he comes from Keta. Nuto then takes Kafu to his office. On arrival at the office, Kafu asks Nuto to change the facilities at the office and orders Kafu to summarize the ministerial practice made up of a big file in two pages for him. Before Kafu settles in his new office, he orders Nuto to write a dismissal letter to his headmaster, Mr. Benji Biasi. In the absence of Mr. Benji Biasi, Reverend Dan Sese acts as a headmaster. Mr. Ansobeko is also stopped from supplying bread to the school and is further cautioned to behave well. Nuto protests against this as he considers this behavior as being irregular. Nuto argues strongly to advise Abram Kafu against the move to dismiss Mr. Benji Biasi, but Kafu uses his ministerial power to coerce Nuto to comply with him. And in addition to that, the announcement must be on radio at 1 o'clock p.m. and on television as well. Nuto feels so bad 
about his encounter with Abraham Kafu dad, he is unable to write the letters. W.W. Mensah, the assistant permanent secretary, is called to work on the letters. Mani Galore, Chapter 7 Mr. Benji Piasi relaxes in his office, reading some history materials to teach the top class later in the day. And so Beko hears a dismissal on radio, rushes in to inform Mr. Benji Biasi of his dismissal, which Mr. Benji Biasi toys initially. At the same time, a police dispatch rider comes in to deliver the dismissal letter to Mr. Benji Biasi. And so when Mr. Benji Biasi discusses the issue, and the former offers to hold the latter for the time being, Reverend Dan Sese comes in to sort of share some crocodile tears, but Mr. Benjibiasi consoles himself and prepares earnestly to leave the school. Benjibiasi leaves National Secondary. And Sobeko stops the bread supply. Reverend Dan Sese buys bread in smaller quantities from the roadside. This creates problem for Reverend Dan Sese. He discusses with Mr. Ansubeko secretly, who enters a deal with Reverend Dan Sese. Mr. Ansubeko will supply bread to the school through Reverend Dan Sese's wife, from which both Mr. Ansubeko and Reverend Dan Sese will benefit. Reverend Dan Sese sends his wife to talk to Kafu's wife about the deal and offer her some money. This collaboration, Reverend Dan Sese believes, will stop any problem that may come out of the bread issue. Kafu returns to his office, reads the dismissal letter, and becomes angry that Nuto fell ill and asked Mensa to write the letter. Kafu invites Mensa to explain his action, which Mensa does perfectly. Kafu dismisses Mensa from his office. Kafu orders Nuto to write to Mr. Benji Biasi to withdraw the pension benefit. The cancellation of Mr. Benji Biasi's retirement benefit worries Reverend Dan Opia Sese, who decides to visit Kafu in Accra to discuss the issue, among other things, with Kafu. Reverend Dan Sese invites Kafu to a Thanksgiving service at Cape Coast. The event was well attended by party faithfuls, family members, among others. Reverend Dan Sese gives a sermon and lauded Kafu and his father. Kafu spends the night with Lydia Baden, Reverend Dan Sese's girlfriend. Kafu leaves the next morning for Accra. Mani Galore, Chapter 8 Life at Kafu's home is good. A harmonious domestic staff of four for Kafu's home are introduced to the readers. They are Efu Akujo, a cook, Frank Owusu, a houseboy, Kofi Danso, a chauffeur or driver, and Saleh Fubukari, a watchman. Kafu now settles into his ministerial job and works earnestly. The Accra Central LP constituency executive sent a five-point petition to Kafu asking for development in areas of education, infrastructure, among others. A meeting to discuss this is arranged at Mr. Mills Blankson's home. The writer gives a brief background of Mr. Mills Blankson, the constituency chairman, highlighting his work ethics and dwelling heavily on how he amassed wealth from New Otulati. Odofu and Salamatu. Mr. Mills Blankson discusses politics, hitting hard on the NUP socialism policy. Kafu arrives and the meeting starts. He exchanges pleasantries with the people and invites them to do an item by item discussion of the petition. Neo Tulati complains about this as he considers the approach too formal for him. The constituency leadership wants to know whether Kafu will provide the amenities requested or not. If he will provide, then details as to who gets which contract should be worked out immediately. Kafu rather deals with the issue one after the other. He gives excuses and tells the people to wait whilst the government looks for funds to do the project. This angers the gathering. However, the constituency leadership presents a parcel to Kafu to show him their joy over Kafu's election. Kafu opens the parcel and finding that the content are smuggled goods of drinks, cigarettes, and wigs. 
Before the meeting disperses, Kafu makes an appointment with Odofo Lanti, one of the main financiers of Kafu's political business. Money Galore Chapter 9 It is Sunday evening. Odofo relaxes at her home, praying that Kafu will visit her. She hears a knock and you blaze, but gets disappointed to see Ofori Norte, alias Conception Contractor. Indeed, Odofu and Salamatu have been having an intimate affair before Kafu's arrival. Odofu orders Ofori Norte to exit. Incidentally, Kafu arrives and orders Ofori Norte out upon the instruction of Odofu Lamsi. Kafu hopes to enjoy a good time with her in her bedroom. Odofu talks about how she met Ofori Norte and how he promised to get her a child for which Ofori Norte is nicknamed Conception Contractor. Odofu also talks about Madame Bampo, the prophetess and her deceitful practices to Kafu. Odofu introduced the issue of Benji Biasi's dismissal, accusing Kafu of having a personal hatred for Mr. Benji Biasi. Kafu explains and pours out his intent bitterness as far as education or teaching is concerned. They then proceed to discuss business. While Kafu asks for support to build a house for his father, Odofu asks Kafu to arrange an import lances for her, as he has done for Salamatu, another party financier. Both Kafu and Odofu enjoy themselves deep into the night until 1 o'clock a.m. when he returns home. Upon arrival, he chats with Bukhari, his watchman, over his weapons and enters to find Grace still waiting for him at a sitting room, looking disturbed. Grace protests and Kafu ignores his wife. Meanwhile, some perfume Odofu sprays on Kafu before departure tells Grace that Kafu has seen a woman before coming home. This aside, the couple discuss other things. Thus, the house of Kafu's father and a visit of new Otulati, they go in to sleep. The next morning, Kafu sends Kofi Danso to bring new Otulati to his house for deliberations before going to his office. At home, Kafu and new Otulati discuss the usual dwelling on the house of Kafu's father and how to raise the funds. The two plan to build a laboratory from which new Otulati and Kafu will each gain 2,000 cities. This is discussed at Kafu's office and Kafu orders Mr. Nuto to write for the project and arrange the contract for new Otulati. Nuto, as usual, protests initially, but when Kafu mentions Nuto's involvement in some license deal, Nuto gives in. The contract is sealed and Kafu implores his friend, New Otulati, to do a good job. Mani Galore Chapter 10 After Kafu's election, an eventual appointment as a minister, he decides to befriend Odofu Lanti, the textile merchant and anti Salamatu, dealer of assortment goods. The ladies indeed press for this relation as they hope to benefit immensely from their intimacy with Minister Kafu. Both ladies employ Ofori Norte, the conception contractor, to spy on Kafu. Kafu visits Salamatu, and surprisingly, he gets crazy about his visit to Odofu Lanti by Salamatu. Kafu denies, but Salamatu provides evidence. This makes Kafu to suspect Ofori Norte, who he meets at Odofu's place during his visit to Odofu. Kafu and Salamatu argue over this until Amega and Mensi Mensa arrive at Salamatu's place. These are traders and friends of Salamatu. Mensi is described as a beautiful 26 year old and a mother of three. They exchange greetings. Kafu leaves Salamatu and her guests after a brief introduction to go to his office. Outside the house, he meets a foreign naughty who he confronts drills and warns never to come to Salamatu's house again. Out of fear, Ofori Norte swallows himself and runs away. In anger, Kafu bursts back into Salamatu's lounge to complain about the presence of Ofori Norte in Salamatu's house. Salamatu cools him with a passionate kiss.
to avoid a scene. She leaves with Kafu to Kafu's office to resolve the problem. Salamatu does this with a plea to her guest to wait for her in her house. Meanwhile, Oforinote comes back to Salamatu's house to meet Amega and Messi Mensa, who were waiting for Salamatu. Messi questions Oforinote as to why the minister treats him the way he does. Oforinote explains that Kafu has seen him earlier in Odofu's place in the night and perhaps suspects him of being a criminal. At the office, Kafu finds Nuto, the permanent secretary, still at post. He comes to the minister's office to ask if the minister wants him. They discuss the promotion of the senior officers among others. Mr. Nuto, a real saboteur, tells Mr. Kafu that the officers are lazy and deserve no promotion. While Mr. Nuto tells the officers that Kafu refuses them their promotion, he bids Nuto good night and turns his attention to Salamatu, with whom they discuss Amega and Messi. Salamatu informs Kafu that Amega and Messi will help him to build his house with 16,000 cities, out of which Kafu will pay back only 4,000. Kafu, in return, is expected to protect Amega and Messi in their smuggling business. Salamatu asks Kafu to come to her house to receive gifts which Messi and Amega have for him. Mani Galore Chapter 11 As Kafu and Salamatu drive back home, they discuss the performance of the government by way of its ability to provide essential goods and services. Salamatu informs Kafu of some items which are in short supply in the country. She mentions specifically baby mug, among others. Meanwhile, Amega, Mercy, and Ofori Noti are waiting for Salamatu's return while enjoying some drinks. Suddenly, the minister's car pulls out and Ofori Noti runs for his life. He goes to hide at the lavatory. Kafu and Salamatu enter the lounge to meet Amega Amenu and Mercy Mensa. They all discuss further shortage of goods in the country, this time dwelling on pork. Messi presents an Omega Ward together with other gifts to Kafu. Salamatu announces the financial package which Salamatu, Messi, and Amega offer to help Kafu. Suddenly, Kafu expresses a wish to empty his bladder or go to the urinal. Salamatu directs Kafu to the toilet. Or not a misses a heartbeat as he hears of Kafu coming to his hiding place. He thinks quickly of what to do. As Kafu opens the door and switches the light on, he sees Ofori Norte and screams. Ofori Norte dashes out while Kafu chases him to the lounge and trips him down. In the process, Ofori Norte manages to run away, leaving Kafu panting. Mercy helps Kafu on his feet. Salamatu comes in to handle Kafu while Emega Amenu and Mercy look on. On his feet, Kafu asks Mercy for beer to the anger of Salamatu. Kafu swears to kill Ofori Norte and later announces his departure. Mercy asks Kafu to give them, Mercy and Amenu, a lift. Salamatu asks Kafu to come back to her. To ensure this, she sprays the perfume which Mrs. Grace Kafu hates so that Kafu will not go to his house. She also warns Mercy whom she suspects is in love with Kafu, not to attempt to hijack Kafu. On the way, the three, Kafu, Amega, and Mercy, discuss development in the country. Mercy Mensa wonders why members of the Liberation Party government are educated, but can't deliver to the satisfaction of the people. Kafu stops at Amega's place for her to alight. Kafu and Mercy drive on still, discussing politics. Mercy laments the behavior of some politicians who say wild things. They get to Mercy's place. Though Kafu does not want to enter Mercy's room, she virtually forces him to go in. Mercy serves Kafu some beer. Kafu and Mercy make a day to enjoy a night together at Hotel Continental on Saturday. Mercy concludes a deal with a deep satisfying kiss to Kafu. 
Kafu drives back to Salamatu's house and meets Heavy Storm. He enjoys dinner with Salamatu and probably spends the night with Salamatu at Salamatu's house. Mani Galore, Chapter 12 Reverend Dan Sese enjoys his headship through which he and his wife, Mrs. Vida Sese, fraudulently enraged themselves. Opia built houses, some of which he hires out to his staff members, while his wife does money lending without a valid license. Reverend Opia decides to have a grand speech on prize giving day with his friend Mr. Abram Kafu as a guest speaker. With this, Reverend Opia decides to visit Kafu in Accra to discuss the event. Reverend Dan Sese visits Kafu in Accra. He buys a lot of food items and chocolates, respectively, for Kafu's family and Gloria Opoku, the 15 year old relative of Mrs. Kafu, who stays with Mrs. Kafu. The chocolates are meant to help Reverend Dan Opia to go Gloria. Kafu arrives home. He is welcomed by Mrs. Kafu. Reverend Opia does not meet his friend because Kafu usually stays from home on Saturdays. The next morning, Mrs. Grace Kafu tells Reverend Opia about the problems she goes through as a result of the changed lifestyle which Kafu leads. He goes out with numerous girlfriends, gambles, and neglects his ministerial work. Grace produces one anonymous letter written to insult and threaten Kafu and his family to Reverend Dan Opia to substantiate her complaints. Mrs. Kafu tells Reverend Opia about Kafu's financial problems, for which Kafu cannot even provide money for his family or to run his house. She humbly requests Reverend Opia to help her build a small house for herself and her children. Reverend Opia readily agrees to help Mrs. Grace Kafu. He promises to give Grace half of the money he makes from the bread deal into the project. Meanwhile, Reverend Opia manages the previous day to corner Gloria Poku in the guest room. When Gloria goes up to prepare the room for him, Reverend Opia virtually forces Gloria to bed after giving her 30 cities. Kafu arrives home shortly after breakfast, tired and sleepy. He is happy about Reverend Opia's visit. And when Opia tells him about a speech and prize giving event, he expresses his delight and promises to attend. Reverend Opia now introduces the issue of Grace's complaint, which Kafu dismisses as being the work of the opposition. Reverend Opia advises Kafu on his political life and gives Kafu a gift of 200 cities and pleads with Kafu not to gamble the money away. Reverend Dan Opia takes a confirmation from Kafu on his promise to attend the speech on prize given day and assures Kafu that he will lay Lydia, Opia's girlfriend, who Kafu sleeps with during the Thanksgiving program at Cape Coast for him. On Saturday, Kafu attends the speech on prize given day at Cape Coast. He delivers a speech which he has told the members to correct the government if it goes wrong. He announces the establishment of factories to provide a much needed goods for the people. He promises the people 100 cities for the purchase of modern encyclopedias. For this, the people's chair Kafu heartily. With the event over, Kafu enjoys Saturday and Sunday at Kepko's with Lydia and leaves for Accra on Monday morning straight to his office. Kafu meets new Otulati at his office where they discuss the inauguration of new lavatory which has taken so long to finish. Kafu and indeed, all the constituency executive go to integrate the facility. Speeches are delivered and tape is cut officially. The team enters the toilet to do the inspection. Unfortunately, a wall collapses, burying the constituency chairman's son, Dr. Mills Blankson, who stays in there for a while. All the others leave. The collapse of this lavatory is an evidence of shoddy work. Money Galore Chapter 13 As usual, Kafu goes into hiding in Odofu's room. Grace is boarded and asks Kofi Dansu, Kafu's driver, to take her through Kafu's girlfriend. They first go to Odofu, who says Kafu is not there, 
even though Kafu is in there. Grace orders Dansu to drive next to Salamutu's house. Salamutu becomes alarmed to hear that Kafu has not gone home for two days and suspects that Odofu is involved. Meanwhile, Odofu tries to convince Kafu to go home to save his wife Grace the pain of going around looking for him or the pain she's experiencing currently. Kafu refuses, but upon persistent requests from Odofu, Kafu uses Odofu's phone to call his wife to simply say that he is well and is helping in the arrangement of the funeral of Dr. Mills Blankson, who perishes when the newly inaugurated toilet collapses. He announces when he will go home and does not allow Grace to ask questions. In a long conversation, Odofu informs Kafu that a building meant for Kafu's father is completed. She also informs Kafu of a three-month-old pregnancy she is carrying for Kafu. Kafu is shocked, but keeps his cool. Meanwhile, the funeral of Dr. Mills Blankson gets the Liberator, a Liberation Party newspaper, and the Morning Herald, a sympathizer of the National Union Party, in some brawl in which they accuse each other of biases. In view of the collapse of the newly constructed toilets, controversy arouses. Laborers argue for bigger pay to cushion them against high risks associated with their job, or they will advise themselves. The Morning Herald supports them, for which the Liberator accuses the Morning Herald for fomenting trouble. Reverend Opia attends the funeral. Later at home, Reverend Opia asks Kafu for the money he promised during the speech and prize giving day at Kepko's. Kafu announced rather amazingly that he did not mean anything he said there. This shocks Reverend Opia to say. Reverend Opia also raises the issue of the conservancy laborers' threat to strike. Kafu dismisses the threat. Reverend Opia cautions Kafu to approach the issue tactfully before Opia leaves for Kepko's after supplying Grace Opoku with some drugs to terminate the pregnancy caused by him. Kafu then agrees and decides to break the laborers' front to weaken their determination to strike. Two weeks later, the laborers issue a press release threatening to strike. The Morning Herald reported it largely. Kafu, sensing danger, invited their leaders for a dialogue in his office. He bribes the chief conservancy laborer with 500 Ghana cities, by which he creates confusion among them, as the leaders are no longer interested in the whole affair. This strike threat naturally dies out. Nitovuga leaks information to the press. The Morning Herald therefore writes inciting editorials against Kafu and the government. Mani Galore Chapter 14 Kafu sends a copy of Morning Herald to Auntie Salamatu's house to read. Kafu reads the editorial and shows his anger over it. Both Kafu and Salamatu discuss the editorial. Salamatu then questions Kafu of where he spent the three days during Dr. Blankson's funeral. Kafu becomes angry and brushes the question aside. Kafu, out of anger, decides to leave but is forced of Orinote and drives back when he remembers having seen the same of Orinote at Odofu's place the last time he visited. He angrily damns Salamatu for setting a spy on him. For this, he announces the end of their relation and attempts moving out, but Salamatu also announces that she is pregnant for Kafu. This pins Kafu down. In the subsequent week, Kafu devotes some time to his work at his office, as his failure to do so creates a lot of problems for the civil service. He remembers the issue of the promotion of the senior officers and questions Nutovuga about it. Nutovuga insists on transferring them first. Again, Kafu announces his decision to detain the editor of the Morning Herald and Mr. Mensa Kwati, the NUP propaganda secretary. Nuto advises Kafu to use the law court as the first option with spark of public outcry. Kafu brings out a letter announcing Nuto's foreign account and questions him about it. He explains it 
and connects his brother in the UK to it. Kafo decides to order the arrest of the Morning Herald newspaper, Mr. Kwati, and Ansobeko to teach them a lesson of their life. Meanwhile, Amega, who has been striving to receive his 4,000 cities from Kafu without success, books appointment to speak to Kafu at his office. Amega is bent on receiving his money against the advice of Odofo and others, asking him to forget about the money. After a lengthy discussion, Kafu promises to pay Amega what he owes him. As Amega leaves Kafu, Neo Tulate comes in to protest Kafu's decision to lock up two gentlemen in prison. Kafu stands by his decision to lock up Mensa Kwati and Ansobeko and advises his friend Nu Otulati to stay out of it. Nu Otulati leaves that topic and introduces an idea of a business to be run by him and Kafu. This he says they should do to ensure their future as he finds a gloomy future for Kafu's government. Neo Tulati suggests a haulage business in which they will buy articulator trucks and use them in carrying goods. Kafu owes his bank 30,000 cities in overdraft. Therefore, he tells his friend to allow him to think of the proposal. Money Galore Chapter 15 The final chapter begins with a major accident at Kafu's residence. Gloria Opoku collapses and is rushed to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, where she is said to have caused abortion. By the circumstances at Kafu's home, Mrs. Grace Kafu concludes that Kofi Danso is responsible. She compels her husband to sack him that evening. That evening, Kafu visits Odofo, where he takes his dinner and discusses the threat of a coup d'etat with her. Kafu talks about his financial problems and mentions the debt he owes Amenu. He tells Odofo that Mercy has given him 2,000 cities to keep for her. Kafu talks about a request for salary increase sent in by some graduate teachers and expresses disgust about that. Odofo advises him to meet them and interact with them just to show that he cares. Kafu invites the leaders of the graduate teachers to discuss the issue. The leaders, called Sacrificial Trio, are Asari Antubam of Amira Secondary School, Bawa Apie of Kuna Secondary School, and Amelia Hansi of Elmina Girls Secondary. Bawa is the leader. After presenting and defending their request, Kafu virtually insults and drives them out of his office. That evening, Gloria Opoku is discharged from the hospital and Kafu goes to meet her at home but ignores her. He goes to ask Grace about who did that to her and she tells him that Gloria says Reverend Opia Sese is responsible for the pregnancy. Kafu gets very angry and thinks of what to do to Reverend Dan Sese. Grace, realizing her fault, now pleads with Kafu to bring back the wrongly accused driver, Kofi Danso, who Grace confirmed Kafu to sack. This is not done. Grace called Mrs. Vida Opia to tell her that her husband is responsible for the pregnancy of Gloria Opoku. However, the news about the near completion of her building makes her excited that she forgets so soon to discuss the issue of Gloria Opoku's pregnancy and the role Opia plays in the entire affair. Meanwhile, Kofi Dansu joined the Royal Holiday Union as a tanker driver. He leaks out very important information about ministers in the government to the Royal Holiday Union. Now, the arrest of Minister Kwati, the NUP propaganda secretary, and the NUP's editor, together with the failure of the government of the Liberation Party to deliver, brings unhappiness among the people in the society. The tanker drivers plan a strike action meant to paralyze the entire country. Kofi Dansu and the National Union Party secretly offered their support to the intended strike. Ni Otulati gets informed about the strike and rushes to tell Kafu who is studying intelligence reports on strike actions in his office? Neo Tulati and Kafu discuss the issue of strike and politics at length, and Otu advises Kafu to be patient with the tanker drivers when he goes to Sekendi later in the day to speak on the issue. 
Tafu goes to second day with Mr. Nutovuga. The meeting, well attended by people of all walks of life, starts well, but along the line, Kafu advises them to be conscious of their action, which would later make a fool out of themselves. Hell breaks loose as the drivers accuse Kafu of insulting them. There is confusion at the meeting. Kafu finally insults them as they also give it back to him. The meeting breaks up and the drivers, joined by the general public, declare a strike action and send through the streets. Meanwhile, Kafu has still not paid Amega his 4,000 cities. Amega and Ofori Norte secretly enters Kafu's house where they find him at the study room compiling a memorandum on the strike action for his colleague's attention. Suddenly, Amega and Ofori Norte appear before Kafu in the room. Kafu threatens to call the police but before he blink an eye, Amega grabs him and ties his hand behind him. Ofori Norte then derides and threatens Kafu. Amega demands his money from Kafu. Norte tells Kafu of all his dealings with the woman, bringing out specific details. In the process, Ofori Norte becomes angry and uses a pocket knife to make a mark on Kafu's forehead. Drops of blood fall out. Kafu screams and this draws the attention of Bukhari. Bukhari draws nearer and seeing his master Kafu under attack, draws his arrow and strike. But Amega sees this just in time and cautions Ofori Norte to dodge. The arrow pierces Kafu and kills him. Bukhari regrets the unfortunate happening and falls on an arrow to kill himself. Just then, soldiers arrive at the scene to arrest Kafu in the wake of a coup d'etat. Finding him dead, the soldiers arrest Ofori Norte and Amega. Grace is brought to the scene and seeing the dead bodies, she collapses. Some of the major themes in this novel include the following. Embezzlement of public funds. The theme of tribalism or nepotism. The theme of corruption or the widespread of corruption in Africa. The theme of irresponsibility. The theme of betrayal of public trust. The team of illusionment. The team of hypocrisy. The team of victimization, brutality, oppression, and selfishness. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.